Hey there, it is Friday, June 10th, and uh, I've been resurrecting uh, songs I wrote. I, I, the last album I put out was 2003, El Dorado, almost 20 years. And um, lately I've been thinking, you know, I have so many songs in the, that I've written in the last 20 years, it's probably time to put out another album. Now, there are a lot of things that are kind of uh, inspiring this. A couple friends of mine, I'll tell you more about this over the next couple of weeks as they get a little further into um, finished projects. A couple of friends of mine have been working on albums again lately. Can you believe it? One of them is somebody we did an album with many years ago. Um, I will tell you a little bit about, more about this one because I want some people to listen to um, Jim Witzel's album. I'll, I'll put some links in here to an, a really cool jazz album that uh, we made a few years ago called Give and Take. And uh, a few years ago, it was like 1990. It was the 90s. Anyway, and uh, um, and Jim was working on another jazz album, and he came back and said, hey, is the uh, Joplin Sweeney label like still a happening thing? And I said, oh, well, sure, I guess. And he said, okay, because I think I want to do a second album 20 years after the first, 25 years after the first, and uh, put it on your label again. I said, wow, okay. And that, along with a couple other things that I'll save for later stories, um, kind of made me think, you know, we have like 11 albums on the label, and I, it's probably time for me to make a, make some more. A couple of years ago, I started making noise about putting out some live shows. I or For about nine or ten years, I did, once a year, did a big show at Villa Montalvo here in, in Los Gatos, uh, Sar Saratoga, actually, just just down the road, up, up uh, over the over a tiny little hill here, and uh, and that's how I, you know, that's how I managed to play with people like Renborn and, and Al Stewart and some of the others that uh, that you've seen uh, various clips of, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, the point of this is that I, uh, I I did record all of those, and I th a couple of years ago I th kind of thought, you know, I should put out some live albums, uh, and a lot of them had newer songs on them, newer than El Dorado, because this went on until about 2008 or so, and El Dorado was finished in three, I think. And um, anyhow, uh, and then I subsequently, and I've put up a lot of acoustic snapshots of other new stuff. Um, there's a ton of songs. There's uh, Waiulu, is that one? I, uh, there was Remember, there, um, anyhow. Uh, so, entertaining the idea of getting back in the recording studio and putting out stuff. Oh, which leads me to, the piece I played right there was one of the first ones I wrote after El Dorado, so back in 2003 or four called One Step Beyond, and it was really one of the first ones that had a lot of percussive playing in it. Um, and then some really unusual um, intervals coming up. There's a spot coming up where the melody, it, it's harmonized in sevenths. called One Step Beyond, and it, it uh, you know, I, for, I've, I kind of forget about it for years at a time, and then I keep thinking, God, it's really, uh, really one of my favorites, and I felt like it was a, a, um, an evolutionary turn, tune, tune, turn, in terms of, uh, of my evolution as a, as a composer, more or less. Anyway, so, what do you think? You ready for a new, a new album of, of my own instrumentals? And then, of course, there's, there's tons of tunes that I've done lessons on that I've never really recorded this we got this one right we got this um let's see we have a 
just thinking out loud, sorry. There's that one. There is, of course. There's an Emerson, Lake and Palmer one. There's Trilogy. Um, there's Send in the Clowns. There's Can You, um, there's the other one that's kind of like it. The other E one. I forget what it is right now. Anyway. Okay. Enough rambling. Um, I got a few quick things to tell you about and then I got to get out of here because it, it's like, it's barely one o'clock in the afternoon here and it's like, it's a hundred degrees. This is, we're, we're in for a hot weekend here in California. Matter of fact, I'm going to wipe off a little, uh, sweat right now. Um, I, uh, oh, I hope I get to this, what I want to talk about, which was the, the tip for the week is going to be about fourths and why they're important for learning your bar chords. G, C, A, D, B, E, F, C, F, D, G, E, A. Got it? That's all. Okay. Um, I want to talk about, oh, first of all, oh, I should have done this sooner. Welcome back. Nesh, she is back making lessons for us. Oops. And what we have is a Cheryl Crow tune that, that Lisa requested a long time ago called Forever. And um, Lisa and I worked on this, and then uh, we talked to our, our teaching staff in the Netherlands, and we now have a lesson on forever. So be sure to check it out, and I think we're going to see, you know, at least at least two a month coming in from overseas again. So And, and um, I will be getting back on board, too. I'm still working on the two that I've been talking about for a long time. I'm not going to even tell you what they were again. Um, one of them and uh let's see other what's the other <laughs> gotta do that with the capos speaking of capos um do i want to get the other point yet no i have one more thing to talk about first um yes no it is uh the request for uh bobby lind elusive butterfly that video that I just added to the post should show you almost everything you need to do to be able to play it. It was in the key of E flat, but playing a bunch of normal chords. One of them, though, was a surprisingly unusual sound. There it was. Of course, with the capo, it's much easier. It looks like a three chord song, the way he's playing it. So you should be able to figure out what those three chords are, except there's a fourth chord in there that you hear in the recording that he doesn't play sneaky guy anyway so watch that video in the in the in the post um, asking about the lesson on elusive butterfly and see if you can figure out what other chord got used in the song besides the three two majors and a minor that we saw in there uh, am I gonna get to oh the question on Apache we did get the uh, the backing track loaded to that and backing tracks for songs, I gotta make a habit of doing that more because, and, and many years ago, I just thought it would be a pain. It's not. Um, because we'll attach them, at, it'll be downloadable, attach, they'll be in the attachments part, the lesson materials thing, where the, uh, where like the charts are and stuff like that. It's not it's gonna be a separate video file. So anyway, the Apache thing has been fixed and uh, thanks for bringing that to my attention. Okay, I've talked about intervals over the last couple of weeks, um, uh, how important it was it is to know thirds. Today I'm going to talk about why fourths are important, and even fifths. There's just no way I can make this a short story, so let me get out more towels. Okay. Um, another really useful thing to memorize is the order of sharps, the way they appear from the keys that have one sharp up to seven sharps. That means it starts with F. F is the first sharp that appears. So. Memorize your order of sharps. Even write these down. F, C, G, D. I'm going to run out of space here. A, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. And then practice it backwards. B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Why? That's the order of flats. And those are the notes by fourths. Why are fourths important? Bar chords, for one. The guitar strings, the lower guitar strings, all the way until we get to the B string, are tuned a fourth apart. E to A. That's a fourth. And a fourth means the fourth note of the scale. So it's an exact distance that is two and a half steps because in a scale we have a whole step from one to two, another whole step from two to three, and then a half step from three to four. Got a half a finger? Anyway, so, um, so five frets. 
E to A, fifth fret. Why or how that can be carried over into the bar chord world is it's really useful to know what two chords, what two roots can be played at any given fret out of the two families. I'm going to do this kind of fast, so the, um, um, hopefully you can watch it a lot of times and solve and figure it out. But basically, the notes coming up the E string give us the roots of the chords that are out of the E family, and the notes coming up the A string give us the notes that are the roots for chords out of the A family. Well, in the E family, the first chord we get to is at the first fret, F. In the A family, the first chord we get to is at the second fret, B. Now, those don't line up because F and B are not a perfect fourth apart, they're an augmented fourth. A perfect fourth from F is B flat. So at the first fret, this is pretty easy to remember, but the two bar chords we get at the first fret are F and B flat. Natural chords don't line up, just like they won't at the second fret. The second fret we have F sharp and B, B natural and F sharp. But after that, every fret that has a natural chord, meaning not a sharp or flat, out of one family has a natural one out of the other family. So those frets, figure out what the two notes are at the third fret, the sixth string and the fifth string, and then the fifth fret, sixth string and the fifth string, and then the seventh fret, and then conveniently, it's a half step to each of the next two natural notes. At the eighth fret, we've got C and F. Then at the 10th, we have D and G. And then at the 12th, we're back to where we started. Don't forget, this line of notes is a circle, not an infinite line. So, um, you should, with some work on this, you should be able to think that, okay, I'm looking for a B chord. Well, I know out of the A family, it's a whole step. It's got to be at the second fret. Out of the E family, I know that at the fifth fret, I have A. So B has got to be at seven. Get it? Okay kind of a, mis a little bit distant there and elusive, but I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll elaborate on that a little bit more probably next week when it will be cooler or I'll be able to get out here earlier. I had too much going on this morning. And uh, because I think I am melting and about ready to get back inside and get out of the, out of the, the toaster. So uh, let's see, I think that's everything I want to talk about today. Some hints about Memorizing your the order of sharps because that gives us our seven letters in fifths starting from F and That same thing backwards starting from B gives us our alphabet in fourths got it Okay, I'll be back next week <laughs>